North Korea is a closed, strongly censored and isolated country, but today it's exhibiting a rare gesture of openness. Journalists from the world over have been invited to witness a spectacle, the destruction of the country's nuclear testing site. These journalists will be allowed to travel to the depths of Mount Mantap, the base of the Pungiri nuclear facility. It's a tricky word. It makes for good headlines, but is there anything more to it? Is this just a PR stunt? Let's first tell you exactly what is expected to happen over the next few days. This facility will be publicly dismantled between May the 23rd and 25th, any time. Explosions will be carried out to collapse all tunnels and block their entrances. All observation and research facilities will be removed. Structures used for guarding the site will be taken down. Satellite images so far show that some of the work to dismantle the site has already begun. Key operational support buildings have been raised to the ground. In fact, rails running into the tunnels appear to have been dismantled. Several small sheds around the site have also been brought down and oxygen cables leading into the tunnels have been removed. But here's the other side of the story. We can only see what the North Koreans choose to show us. What they may want to hide is this fact. The site may already have collapsed. If not completely, then partially. So dismantling the site makes no difference whatsoever. Let's understand this in detail. North Korea tested thermonuclear weapons on the 3rd of September last year. The impact of that test on this testing facility was immense. It was 10 times as powerful as the Hiroshima bomb. This is also the site of five previous nuclear tests. You can imagine what would be left of the site after such powerful shocks and explosions. And that's what scientists are saying. They say that part of the site collapsed just eight and a half minutes after the test last year. It was a near vertical site collapse. It left the facility unsafe for further testing, which means it's useless for the North Koreans now. The site is use useless. They might as well destroy it. The U.S. Geological Survey recorded a second seismic event after this test. It was believed to be the collapse of the site. The aftershocks was f were felt months later. In December last year, two aftershocks were detected, prompting concerns about the stability of the surrounding mountains. And that's not the only thing suspicious about this event. North Korea has not invited any scientists. It has not, not invited any experts to corroborate the destruction of this testing site. They've only invited a few journalists to witness the so-called historic ceremony. Their assessment will be arguable. So while the world watches the ceremonial shutdown of a nuclear testing site that is no longer usable, North Korea tries to steer clear of what happens to the other side, the Yongbyong facility. They want no mention of that term. Sure enough, we'll talk about it. Yongbyong is located in the north of the country's capital, Pyongyang. A nuclear reactor and a uranium enrichment facility has been set up in Yongbyong. That's on the left side of your screens. Satellite images show activity around the site, which produces weapons-grade plutonium. This plant is very much operational. So the closing down or destruction of the other site will not really hinder Kim's nuclear program. I'm afraid it may all be a farce, which brings us to another equally dramatic and might I say useless development. The United States of America has released commemorative coins ahead of the meeting between Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump. They say it's a goodwill gesture. The Trump administration is calling this the trip coin. It depicts Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un, notably described as the supreme leader. They're facing each other with a background of US and North Korean flags. The words peace talks are inscribed on the front of this coin. The timing of this re release is also interesting. It comes just after North Korea threatened to pull, down, pull out of talks. Kim said that he was not interested in one-sided negotiations that would force North Korea to relinquish its nuclear weapons. Donald Trump, who keeps adding fuel to the fire, was seen trying to diffuse tensions for once. But 12th of June is still far away and the protagonists are temperamental men, Kim and Trump. We'll have to wait and see how this coin flips. So as the two leaders prepare to meet, there is little clarity on how many and how potent are North Korea's nuclear weapons. Pyongyang has one of the world's largest conventional military forces, right? It has pursued an aggressive nuclear weapons program. But what exactly has that program achieved? Our next report finds out.
six types of ballistic missiles, more than 20 nuclear weapons, and an active underground nuclear testing site. It's difficult to imagine how one of the world's poorest countries could have such a robust nuclear program. North Korea makes no compromise when it comes to protecting itself. The government's military first approach is evident from the fact that it spends a quarter of its GDP on its military. North Korea's nuclear program has been a cause of concern for the international community for a long time now. As of 2017, the country claimed to have conducted six successful nuclear tests. It has tested several missiles of short, medium and intermediate ranges. Those that can target the North's neighbors, South Korea and Japan. In the past, the country has also tested several submarine-launched ballistic missiles. But Pyongyang tested its most powerful weapon in November 2017, the Hwasong-15. The intercontinental ballistic missile, which has a range of 13,000 kilometers, meaning it can target North America. It is the country's largest and most powerful ballistic missile to date. Estimates of the country's nuclear stockpile vary, but it is believed that Pyongyang has at least 15 to 20 nuclear weapons. The regime possesses the know-how needed to produce bombs with weapon-grade uranium or plutonium, the core components of nuclear weapons. Until 2013, North Korea tested only atomic bombs. But in January 2016, Pyongyang claimed to have tested a hydrogen bomb, one that is believed to be 10 times more powerful than the previous ones. The 2016 tests brought global condemnation but didn't deter North Korea's supreme leader. In fact, Kim Jong-un renewed the country's efforts last year. And while North Korea's nuclear capabilities are often talked about, there is very little information available about its other formidable military capabilities. It is believed that North Korea has an arsenal of close to 5,000 tons of chemical weapons, including mustard gas and sarin. Experts also believe that the country has biological weaponry capable of producing anthrax and smallpox. North Korea's nuclear weapons program has strengthened under Kim Jong-un. He sees these weapons as essential to his regime's survival. But while it appears that the country is built for war, Kim Jong-un has surprised many by his willingness to talk nuclear disarmament with US President Donald Trump. Your report, Vion. So this impending meeting is keeping everyone on the tenterhooks, especially given the periodic bluster from both sides. What they're trying to do is bolster their position. Overdoing this, though, this kind of one-upmanship may kill the whole deal. Let's start with Donald Trump. He's been repeatedly slammed for his fickle-mindedness. His administration's policy seems to be this. Offense is the best form of defense. Trump's second-in-command, Mike Pence, said that the president will not hesitate to, to walk away from the summit if North Korea does not keep its end of the bargain. His comments come days after North Korea threatened to cancel the summit, saying that they will not bow to American bullying. The Trump administration may be using the hot-cold approach with the North Korean leader. Just last week, U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton recommended the Libyan model for denuclearizing North Korea. A comment that rose the hackles in Pyongyang. North Korea again threatened to cancel the meeting. Trump was quick to pacify. He said that they were not even looking at the Libya model and that Kim would remain in charge of his country. The United States president does seem a little unnerved, though, before the summit. He reportedly dialed the South Korean president to inquire about the North's changing position. In fact, the South Korean president is in the U.S. as we speak. He's been instrumental in keeping this summit on track. We'll follow developments. And these two leaders who are going to meet next month.